From our studios at historic Arnold's Park Amusement Park, it's Okaboji Broadcast with Jeff Thee. Welcome to Okaboji Broadcast, everybody. I'm Jeff Thee. Today with me, Tom Tourville. We're, in, we're on the patio where they rock the patio right outside <laughs> of the uh, Iowa Rock and Roll Music Association Museum. And Tom, welcome. What a great day to sit outside. And Isn't this gorgeous? This is uh, truly what Okaboji is all about. Boy, it is. Uh, the only thing we're missing is a couple frothy... <laughs> <laughs> drinks here in front of us, but uh, you know, it's early in the day, guys, so we'll get there. We're, we're like 9.30 a.m. in the morning, folks, <laughs> just to let you know. Uh, you've got a huge event, and this is going to be a, a, a big one that coincides with other things you're doing, Tom, but uh, on Sunday, July 25th, right here in our own roof garden. Yeah, it's, it's called the Rock and Roll Reunion Autograph Party and Book Release. Yeah. And we're being based upon <clears throat> two books that Becky Peters and I have done. Uh, last year we did, um, it's called Rock in the Green. Yeah. It's the history of the music of Arnold's Park Amusement Park. And um, if anybody thinks it's tough putting a book out in the middle of a pandemic, you are correct. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was, whoa, it was tough. Like there was nobody around to buy a book. Yeah. And then this year, in the process of doing that book, um, Becky and I asked one basic question. Is the Roof Garden book okay? Is it up to date? Well, we hadn't touched that book in just over 10 years. Right. So it was <laughs> 10 years old, and but we went with the conclusion that, yeah, it's up to date because there's nothing more you can add to it. Right. We got everything, and that was kind of our, our thought. So we started, sat down and started the research on a Roof Garden book and we quickly learned that we needed to take the old one, blow it up, throw it away, <laughs> and start from scratch. And we did just that. Yeah. We, we, that's exactly what we did. We, we didn't use the old one as a base. We kept the information intact, and we added then, just kept adding to it. And I think by the time everything was said and done, we had about like 140 new shows wow. at the Roof Garden that we found. And that represented 140, about 160 different new artists or same artists. Maybe they did like, you know, multi-shows like the Rumbles or Flippers. Right. What, and uh, uh, we got them all. Where are you going to find your information? What are you having to dig you know, into there, Tom? that is one of the most often asked questions we get. Let me see if I can start. Uh, Iowa Rock and Roll Files, my files, which are about two times bigger. Uh, it's kind of a go-to database for research on Midwest rock and roll. Right. Uh, the newspaper offices. We did newspaper search in uh, Spirit Lake, in Milford, in Esterville, in Sheldon. Looking for in ads Algona. for shows Looking coming up? Looking for ads okay. for press releases. You know, you just start in 1952, if you're in the Algona paper, and type in Rough Garden and let it go. And sometimes it only goes to two ads or two notices. Or, or such and such group got married, you know, at the Rough Garden. Yeah. That's great. But we started that whole search. And then we went through the files of the park and went through actually um, Tony Olson Sullivan from Sport Port Dodge. Uh, we asked her for information from her father's uh, files, and she didn't have that much, so it was surprising what we have learned. And we just kept putting things together. Uh, we learned that there were two Beach Boy concerts at the Roof Garden, 1963 and 1966. Wow. We didn't know about the 1966. We learned that the Buffalo Springfield was booked for the Roof Garden. I'll leave it just at that. Okay. I'll let it hang and booked. <laughs> uh, we learned that Rush from Canada was booked at the Roof Garden. I'll leave it just at that. Yeah. You know, and, and it just kept going on and on and on. Uh, one of my favorites, if, if you love music, of course, is the legendary New York underground group, the Velvet Underground. John Cale, who was the Velvet Underground, played at the Roof Garden opening for uh, Black Oak, Arkansas. There had been times where you couldn't <laughs> believe what you were seeing in front of you. It's all documented. And I've looked at this, <laughs> and then I went to I went to so many Okaboji uh, fans and friends yeah. through Facebook and said, "Here are these shows. Anybody remember any? What was your favorite? Oh, you got to do this. That's what. Were, what were your top five shows? And all these different groups come <laughs> in, and you got to really research them." 
because sometimes their memories don't match facts. Well, and that's led into my question. Did anybody ever say, I swear to yeah. you, I yeah. saw the Beatles I, at the Roof Garden? I saw Johnny Mathis at the Roof Garden. Yeah. And, and Johnny Mathis's music, does anybody know what Johnny Mathis's music is? Sure. It is the slowest, quietest <laughs> love ballads you'd ever heard. I never found any information to back that claim up. And then I just think about it. Would Darla book Johnny Mathis? I don't think so. <laughs> you know, because there would be no dancing. Yeah. There would be close dancing. There would be no rock and roll. <laughs> the kids wouldn't be whooping it up. And you went to the roof garden as a kid to whoop it up. Yeah, that's you know, right. You didn't go there to be quiet. They, called it, call it, they could have called it the, the whoop garden. <laughs> you, don't, you don't sit back in the booth and cross your hands and say, this is nice. Yeah. You, you go to have fun. So uh, yeah. It's the roof garden. So I never found seriously any documentation of Johnny Mathis, uh, which brings me to a point, one of the section, new sections of the book that we did is called Decoding the Urban Legends. We take on the the biggest names that in the history of music that were at the roof garden and document or not document yeah. that they were there or not there and my favorite one is my dad told me he saw elvis there <laughs> so i know elvis was at the roof garden buddy holly played the roof garden it just goes on and on and on yeah and so we took a whole section and we decoded the legends, yeah. and we, we go into the research, we show you why, we tell you why, we show you dates and why that wasn't possible, or it was possible, and either way, and we uh, put all of those kinds of things in there, and uh, it's been fun. One of the things we did with the book, and I, then I'll get to the question of, of the 25th, yeah. <laughs> uh, it's the one thing that everybody goes to first, it's kind of like the hot section, uh, so what do they get paid? Yeah. And we went through from 1956 or 7 all the way to like 1984. And we showed you what people were getting played, yeah. paid, I should say, yeah. to play the roof garden. And it's just staggering. You know, early in rock and roll history, one of the most favorite types of shows for Darlo to book was like the Caravan of Stars, where they, they bring in a bus and it had t 10 artists on it, or eight or nine right. artists, yep. plus a band. Right. And so the four-piece band would back, play their own set, and back all eight, nine, 10 artists yeah. that were on the show. And we showed you what that 14, 15, 16, because of management, person show got paid. Yeah. Thousand dollars. Yeah. 14 people dividing a grand. <laughs> but it was a different time. You know, you didn't have a, a U.S. Bank Stadium that held 70 some nope. thousand people. Nope. You had hundreds of these ballrooms that held similar to what the old Roof Garden did. And so they'd play night after night after night. If they were all making kind of equal money, yeah. it added up pretty yeah. quick for them. So the new book, long story short, it's going to be fantastic. <laughs> and it is fantastic. It's been selling really well. Uh, we took all the old ones off the shelves and restocked everything <laughs> with all new. And I know that has helped get the new book up and going so people remember it. And Becky P uh, did an absolutely incredible cover. Uh, the cover's beautiful. Everybody comes up, this is gorgeous. Oh. Um, one last thing, then we'll get to the 25th. I keep promising. <laughs> we actually went out to legendary Roof Garden rock and roll stars. And we asked if you would please Give us your favorite memory from playing the Roof Garden. Ray Graffia from the New Colony Six, Jim Pedrick from the Ides of March, uh, Danny Hine from the Fabulous Flippers, uh, Pete Clint Quinn from Pete Clint Quintet, Ricky Knight, the lead singer for the very first British Invasion Band to come to the United States, let alone play in the Roof Garden, the uh -huh. Hollow Blues from Hall, England, uh -huh. and Ricky's quote was 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 great. And we decided to top it off with the cherry on top, and we got a hold of the man, 83 years old, living in Memphis, Tennessee, Mr. Sam Sumiango, uh -huh. whose real name is, whose stage name was Sam the Sham. Sam, Sam the Sham. And Sam made a, made a quote to us. He said, "Yeah, it was a great ballroom to play. I remember it well." Going, yeah, right. <laughs> you know, I played there one time and there was no roof on the building. We stood on the stage with snow fencing in front. 
And I shook my head and went back and looked at the documentation. 1968, the roof blew off, and Darlow did 14 shows, 15 shows, with no roof on, or if it was going to rain, he put him over in the Majestic Roller Rink. And sure enough, Sam was booked oh, at the it. roof garden during the no roof period when they were putting a new roof on and you're playing under the stars. <laughs> and sure enough, Sam nailed it. And it's it's really fun. So I think And that's phenomenal. I mean the fact that I mean these guys have played thousands of dates. Ricky you know. Ricky Knight said, I'm sure I like the ballroom, but we really like the amusement park. We actually rearranged our schedule so we could stay another oh, cool. day at Okaboji <laughs> to ride the rides. <laughs> and then everything hit me. These are 14, 15, 16 year old kids. Sure. 17 year old kids. And for them, playing a cool ballroom or riding the roller coaster, it was uh, no comparison. Yeah. I'll ride the roller coaster. <laughs> and they did. They stayed for another day to play in the park. That's cool. And uh, yeah, that's really, really cool. Um, All right. Well, let's get on to the 25th. <laughs> 25th. <laughs> We're going to be doing our big rock and roll reunion and autograph party on the 25th. It starts at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. It's entirely free to attend, so we look for a great attendance. Uh, it's going to be in the brand new roof garden. If you haven't seen it, this is your time to come in. Yeah. Look around and see the beautiful facility. We have right now between, <laughs> it's, a big, it's a big gap, 55 and 70 musicians who have signed up to come and sign autographs along with Rebecca and myself. Uh, the gentleman sitting to my right will be there as one of the legendary Elvises from what I call <laughs> the Elvis explosion that happens, uh, should be, every summer in the Roof Garden. And it's a really fun show. But we've got members from groups like, uh, let's see if I can get some of them, the Valairs, the Seven Sons, uh, the F Fabulous Flippers, the Rumbles Limited. Yep, we got four or five guys from, <laughs> from the Rumbles coming up. Uh, I'm so happy to have Larry Wiegan come down from Minneapolis. Uh, Larry is, I think, one of the top two bass players in the history of the Midwest. Yeah. And Larry, of course, played with Crow. And his bass work alone, an evil woman, should put him into the Bass Players Hall of Fame if there was such a thing. Right. Uh, let's see, from Jesse Brady, Jeff Christensen, uh, I just had a number of guys from Interstate Cruisers sign up. Uh, Flat Cat comes to mind. We're going to actually have a young guy, not young anymore, uh, who was in the very first band to ever open Rock the Roofs. And that night there were six musicians. Uh, Dave Raleigh was the acoustic opener, yeah. but Dave can't make this. And then it followed by Big Daddy Cade and the Blues Masters. And it just rock the place. I remember John said looking at me and he goes, what? I go, yeah. You know, it was pretty amazing. Actually, that show, the very first Rock the Roof, was te was televised that night and released on DVD. And you see it every now and then if you look for it, usually on Amazon. Yeah. And it's I never Big knew Daddy that. Kid and the Blues Masters live at Arnold's Park Roof Garden Ballroom. Okay. And, and this they, was in the second that roof was garden. in the old metal building, right? Yeah. yeah, the old metal, the old metal roof garden, right? And it was one of the first rock the roof in there. And to say we had fun was an understatement. <laughs> We've got one of the gentlemen from the Blues Masters coming, so you know it's going to be incredible. Of course, again, I say it's free. Uh, you can get anything you want signed, but of course we have books available, right? And you know some of the musicians played the park; they never played the roof. Some of the musicians played the roof. Some played the roof and the park. So we're just going to kind of get anything signed, you know, whatever comes that way. Uh, we got guys from the Dork Torques, uh, the Dentaires, uh, the Senders. I'm rem I'm fr I should be remembering all 50 names here, but I I'm not <laughs> doing that. You're not off quite a few. Oh, <laughs> yeah. There, there's, a, there's a lot more to be to be recognized. But, but we have. The nice thing about getting the incredible. book is if. You want to get something from the Dan Terry, you can find a place in the book yep. that features them. Yeah, totally. Get the signature on that or a picture of the poster or whatever it is. Between one or the other book, everybody in that room is in the book. Yeah. You know, I can't tell you which book, but you know, like <laughs> Interstate Cruisers would be in the Rock Rock in the Green, and the Den Terrors and Torqueas would be in uh, Remembering Okaboji's Roof Garden Ballroom. So they're going to be in both books. 
We're excited about this. Uh, we, I did this, um, what was it? Four and a half, five years ago when I did my book in Southern Minnesota Rock and Roll, we did a signing with a reunion and autograph party in Fairmont, Minnesota at the Historical Society. And they reserved X amount of space and they kept coming in the door, just coming in the door yeah. right and left. And, and I, I had a guy come in and say, hey, I played in my high school marching band. Does that count to sign autographs? <laughs> I go, not quite. <laughs> but it was, it was so much fun. Um, we've got guys from the Brotherhood, from the Epicureans coming down, both huge Minnesota bands that were so popular at the Rough Garden. And uh, they will be here. It's just going to be... An exhilarating day of rock and roll. People are coming because they want to, and they're going to be here to sign because they think it's fun and important. You got to remember, playing at the Roof Garden or playing at the park, it's a big deal. Yeah. We go out, we stand on the green, we see a band, and we get done. We go, boy, that was great. I wonder who's next week. Yeah. It lasts about five seconds. Yeah. The musicians get down, they get in the back, they get together and say, guys, we really hit it tonight. Yeah. We nailed it. And they don't forget that yeah. because they played the park. Yeah, exactly. You know, uh, my son has played the park. You've played the park. I mean, just about every musician in this area has played the park. And it's a big deal. Oh. You know, and now that they now that Becky and I have documented it in, a, in books, they love it. You know, it's, it's even better. And because, you know, they're... Their night of, of, uh, of fun or remembrance is documented, uh, just like the um, Rock the Roofs are all in the, in the Rock in the Green book, yep. and all of the Labor Day weekend, if you performed, if you played, if you sang, right. if you did something other than just take a plaque and go home, <laughs> you know, literally you had to be an entertainer, yeah. uh, and, you, and you entertained, you're in the book. And so it's uh, You know what it reminds fantastic. me of, if you've ever seen one of these signs, people have them up in their homes, we have one that says, we didn't know we were making memories, we just thought we were having fun. Yeah. And here are the memories, you've documented so many of the yeah. memories for the band members, for the people who went to the roof garden, went to the green space here or in the amusement park. Uh, I was there, I saw this band, I remember that night. You, you asked where we get the information, I sent out a an email blast to about 300 musicians. Who did you open for at the Roof Garden? Because the roof was terrible about saying who the openers were or documenting the openers. Sure. I mean, remember, every national band of the Roof Garden had an opener, usually in a local area, but a band. And Darlo had certain bands he loved, and they would come in and be the openers. And <laughs> did I get a response? I got flooded. So I'd have to take those memories and go back and well, it was the third week of July. I went back and looked at when such and such a, the turtles were there. Nope, it would be the fourth week of July, but you were, you were there. <laughs> you got you me know. in the neighborhood. Yeah, you, it, it, I, that's what it takes. And I don't think, I probably got 70 responses back. And I only had one I couldn't find, couldn't match to anybody. Yeah. They, I mean, that's I, pretty good memory. I went through a five year run and I go, man, I wish I could put that band on a show, but the show they remember the open for, um, they weren't there. Yeah. You know, and that was, I had a guy, it was a guy out of Iowa City that played in a band and he remembers opening for the uh, Shadows of Night. <laughs> Sorry. Unless you got your year on, it didn't happen. <laughs> you Unless there. you graduated college the next year, yeah. <laughs> it, it's not on there. And I trust my database. I really do. I have a yeah. lot of trust in it because, you know, we have uh, 200 hours in the new yeah. Okaboji book, Roof Garden, and Rock in the Green. Oh, my, 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 my. It's fun for you. Oh, yeah. We got, well, it took two years for that. Book book took two years. Yeah. And the Rock in the Green, we probably have 300 hours because there was no good database anywhere. Yeah. Well, the database exists now, courtesy of you and Rebecca Peters. 800 pound bound books of uh, the Lakes New Shopper. That's dedication. That's dedication. <laughs> there was a couple I'd, I'd holler, John Jr., I can't lift this sucker. You know, he'd come wheel it in and pick it up and carry it over to the table for oh, me. Oh, that's cool. Thank you, man. I couldn't lift it. And it, was just, it was just more than I could lift yeah. physically. And, uh, yeah, we, yep. and we had so much fun. So the books are really great. Our, our reunion show, 
an autograph party and book release. It's kind of a three-way combo. Will take place on the 25th of July. That's a Sunday, yeah. from one o'clock to three. It costs absolutely nothing to come and attend. Uh, if you don't want to buy a book, bring something along to get signed. Uh, make sure it's got room for about 70 autographs, 65 autographs. Uh, and I, I'm planning on who I know is going to be there, and I haven't even planned on my walk-ins. <laughs> and the walk-ins happen. I was telling Jeff we did one of these shows uh, some years ago in Minnesota, and I had 15 walk-ins. Yeah. I thought I knew how many chairs I needed. I was scrambling. Uh, nice surprise to yeah, have. Yeah, and we're yeah. going to have somebody else sell the books. So Becky and I can actually sit down <laughs> and talk to people and listen to their rock and roll memories and, you know, sign the books. Yeah, which, you might as well enjoy it, too. Yeah, we're, yeah. we're going to have some fun. Jeff is going to be there. First, he's going to sign for a while as Elvis, no, not in a suit, <laughs> uh, as one of the participants in the Elvis explosion at the uh, Rock the Roofs. And the other thing that's really cool, I guess I can see it here first, um, Jeff is going to help us broadcast uh, the reunion show live while it's happening and show the, some of the musicians up and down the tables and the signing and, and all the fervency going on. It's going to be great fun as all that action happens. It's not going to go for the full two hours. <laughs> it's going to be a, a chunk, but we will have it on his website. Well, I'll have it on my Facebook. It'll also be on Jeff's Facebook. And we're going to work out the details when we turn the camera off today, <laughs> like the where and the, you know, the when, basically, which, which time lock. But you're going to be able to get to see some of this, and, and we're going to leave it up. We're going to post it. We're going to leave it up so people from around the Midwest can, can see a lot of these musicians. Uh, be candid. Deserve the recognition they've so richly deserved for years. And uh, this isn't about a Hall of Fame. This is just about their footprints yeah. on music at the Roof Garden or at Arnold's Park Amusement Park. And it's going to be just amazing. Very good. Well, Thomas, thank you again for all your dedication and uh, research. And oh my goodness, I can't even imagine it. But we look forward to seeing you just across the street here at the Roof Garden on July 25th at 1. I'm really looking forward to it. I've been working on it a long time. I think it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun indeed. All right. Well, we want to thank Tom Tourville for joining us here today. Join us again on the 25th of July right in the Roof Garden. It'll be a great time to get some autographs, go down memory lane, and enjoy rock and roll as it uh, went through our Iowa Great Lakes. Thanks to Tom for being here. We thank you for watching us right here on Okaboji Broadcast. Okaboji Broadcast from the studios at Historic Arnold's Park Amusement Park is brought to you in part by the headquarters of the University of Okaboji is at the Three Suns, open Monday through Saturday 10 to 5 and Sunday from 10 to 4. The Scott Troutman State Farm Agency in Spirit Lake, Pure Fishing in Spirit Lake, Last Touch Painting and Cleaning providing interior, exterior, house painting and professional cleaning services in Spirit Lake. Quest Wealth Management, a financial advisory practice of Ameriprise Financial Services, advisor Jan Spielman, AJ Spielman and Erica Wachholz. Duckies Marine and Motorsports Repair in Spirit Lake. Bank Midwest, dream big, plan wisely, live well. Lakes Regional Healthcare and Avera Partner. Ruth Van Locker at the Lake, where carnivores are welcome on Hill Avenue in Spirit Lake. Beck Engineering in Spirit Lake. B Radiant Laser Skin Studio in the Okaboji Plaza in Okaboji. 